For Christian families, Christmas Eve is supposed to be filled with joy, spending time with loved ones, and preparing to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ on December 25th. But for the Tarsinski family, the holiday will forever be remembered as the night their 18-year-old daughter, Ariana, was murdered in their own home. As I was in my uh, bedroom, I hear Eddie screaming, Eddie, Eddie, uh, help, help, I up, I up. And uh, he's got my daughter by the neck like this, and she had blood coming out of her mouth. And I'm like, what the hell did you do? What the, what the hell did you do? And then woke up my wife, and she grabbed her neck, and um, I pushed him out of the house. Um, we're going back and forth. The, the exact words were, he's like, oh, you kill me. I'm going to go to jail for the rest of my life anyway. I, my neighbor hears him say, yeah, just kill me. I up, I did this, uh, you know, for the rest of my life, and as Thomas comes around to the side, he just had these eyes, he was on drugs or something, he, for, he was on something, uh, he started going towards Thomas, so Thomas, you know, hit him naturally, because as I was back here, and then going back to, out to the front to see if there's police and ambulance, he was sitting on the edge of the bed, trying to cut his own throat, um, going, like this, officers, probably 10 deep, um, one of them with the AR, and he's like, get on the ground now, I'm not going to tell you again, I'm like, no, no, you don't understand, I'm hysterical, my daughter, she's bleeding out, she needs help, man, like, He's like, get on the ground now, I'm not gonna tell you again. So when I was in the car, they uh, got Judy, who was holding my daughter's neck. Um, they grabbed her off of Ariana, our daughter. Um, nobody was, nobody jumped down to render the aid to my daughter. So she, her jugular vein is cut, you know, it's, you put pressure. I mean, even a second is, is all, ever, everything. A little while later, my wife comes, they bring my wife out. My wife tries going back in to, you know, cause she's saying my baby, my baby. Yeah. Cop picks her up. Slams on the ground, bam. You know, I'm like, now I'm screaming. I'm like, what the, you know? I sat in front of the house for six hours. There came a point where I told them I had to use the restroom. And I kept banging on the window because they weren't paying attention to me. And they told me, a gentleman officer said, if you don't stop, we're gonna put you in handcuffs. Deal with it. I ended up using the bathroom in the car. Yeah. Even the game when I was to call Ramon three times in a cop car. You know what I mean? Who makes that mistake? Man? I mean, come on. Like, you call me the murderer, you know what I mean? And after a while, uh, you know, the th after the third time, then I'm like, what the hell is your problem? You know, and they're like, well, hey, hey, well, you don't have to get up. What do you mean, man? You just called me Ramon three times. After Kraft is the, when he introduced himself because he took over the case. The first time that he calls, he says, uh, hey, Eddie, uh, okay, I'm Detective Kraft. I say, how you doing? He goes, I'm just calling to see how your daughter's going. And I'm thinking to myself, my daughter's gone, man. Like, he's like, I said, she's dead. Like, he's like, oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh I, I mean, he didn't know what to say. So that actually, the conversation went there. That was it. Um, and then we tried calling again because um, we wanted to know what was going on because we never got phone calls from any of them. Never texted us. They never called us. We, we always had to sit down. We always had it. Yeah, we always had to call them. They never kept in contact with us. But when you did want to keep in contact with them, it was always like you were bothering them. The second call I had with Kraft is, was two weeks after that because I want to tell him about the, the knife cut mm -hmm. that Ramon was trying to cut his own throat and I didn't want him to think it was my daughter. He's saying the whole time he's saying, well, if you, two things. It was either self-inflicted or I'm sorry I wasn't at the scene. Those were his two favorite words. You know what I mean? That's all you got from him. You never got anything more than anything less. Mm -hmm. We finally got a time we had to sit down, but he called a couple of days before he had COVID. So a couple, a month or so went on up to that. Then we tried to get another time and then he had COVID again. Um, and the whole time, you know, it's you, if you texted them or called them, it wouldn't be until days they got back to you. You really didn't have any very many conversations with Detective Kraft. He didn't even bring us in for right. He didn't yeah. even he didn't. No one even brought us in for questioning. Like, uh, like they didn't do a walk through through your house. I've asked not. I've asked when he was here that day. I said, "Hey, while you're here, let me show you about where we're, like where we're sitting, what's going on." Like, what, he's nope. I had everything I need. Oh, he told us point? that's it. He doesn't. We he, no contact anymore. Um, he doesn't have to. We don't have to call him. Call Magrino if you want to call him. But then you call Magrino, and then he'd be like, "You got to call Kraft on that." It was it was yeah. a, a bouncing game back and forth. You know what I mean? That we got a call from the funeral home yes. saying that they had the death certificate. Well, we were excited about that because that's what we were waiting for. Because that's when he said, "Well, we'll see what the death certificate says. Well, that will tell all." You know, and that's. When we know when we go pick him up. So we're thinking, if it says homicide, that's a mur that's murder, so they're gonna go get him. Uh, we went there and, and I even, we even called Croft from the uh, funeral home and said, hey, you guys gonna go pick him up? It says, uh, you see the death certificate? And he's like, yeah, I saw it. And he goes, uh, well, we got other things going on here. Um, just made an excuse. I'm like, yeah, but you guys just told us that you're gonna go for the third time. You're gonna go pick him up. It, it was like, you gotta see what this says, what that says, what this says. And it was never, it was broken promises the whole time. Uh, you're kind of helpless. Um, you know, he's, he gave the case away already. Um, we, he doesn't have half the stuff. Um, his side is closed. And now Magrino is just, uh, he kicked us out of the office. And, and they've done nothing for us. They've given us 
no answers, no nothing. We couldn't even be with our daughter in, in the time that we she, in need. You know what I mean? She's by herself the whole time. She's by herself in the back bedroom till the medics get there. What do you want some, how do you want me to act? You know what I mean? How, how would you act? You know what I mean? You're told that you're gonna go get to the murderer or you're gonna do this and you're gonna do that. How do you want me to act? I mean, you know what I mean? Lie it's just, it's, a, it, it's like they, they lie so much they don't even know what's going on anymore. Before uh, Sheriff Al Nienheis came to you and, and comforted you and said he's gonna make sure they catch this guy, right? Not oh yeah, not at all. As a matter of fact, I, I emailed him. I'm talking about your department, how unprofessional they are, how, uh, disrespectful they are and there was no news coverage of this not right? immediately and what what did they what did you hear that they told the media when they inquired about it uh it was an unintended incident which yes. uh, unintended incident and there was because we when we pulled up to the house we were like oh my god there's gonna be you know news there whatever nobody and we're like and, and it was like nobody even knew about it and the first thing they told us is listen Please do not talk to anybody about this case. Don't do not go, to, you go with anybody. Don't go on the media. Don't call his family. So for a year, we're totally quiet. Now it's kind of it all makes sense why you want it to be quiet because it's there's just so much, so many holes in this. You know what I mean? So many. But how do you and, and how do you say you're done with a with a with you're done with your findings if you haven't even talked to the murderer? Like you like. Having, really haven't even talked to us. They're saying that they don't have enough evidence when they have a death certificate, you know, it says homicide, and they're not doing anything about this case. They don't care about the case anymore. How do you look at the video if they don't have body cameras? Right, but, right. Well, people want them to have body cameras in this state. And they, they definitely he should. Because refuses he refuses it. He that, will not yeah, he refuses it because he's dirty. That he's just, he, he's just, as, he's, he's, the corruption starts there then. Why would you not want to have something? It's going to help you too. They're not absolutely only, needed. Uh, obviously, there's a reason why they don't want them because there's, there's, they're, what are they hiding? Do you think it would have helped your case at, if if the deputies in the surrounding area at the, at the night of this homicide would have seen how the suspect was acting, I mean, tell absolutely. Me what I think absolutely. I think they would have saw exactly how the suspect was. Um, just you would have seen a lot more. They would and they would have had the credibility of a, of a break, seeing it and seeing how his demeanor was, or seeing how my wife was thrown on the ground, or um, there's just so much more that would protect the citizens and the police officers both. Um, but definitely should have body cams. And I don't know the reason why. I guess the sheriff doesn't want to because uh, why would you not want your police to... It's, first of all, it's a safety thing too. You know what I mean? Um, and there should be no... There should be a hands down. Uh, yes, but obviously he's dirty. He's just as... And that's like his department's There's dirty. a lot of corruption. Uh, it, there there really is. There's, yeah, It's obvious. We lost our daughter uh, in front of us. And then, you know, we act... They act like we're the criminals and... Um, it's just, it's unbelievable.